Hello, I'm Rebecca the Maths Lady, here to help you become an expert maths teacher so that all your children love their maths and become fluent and creative with it. This is the second video in the series for teachers of children who are five years old, that's English Year One, and it's our second formal year of maths teaching. In the first video in this series, I explained that expert maths teachers have two sets of skills. One is that they really deeply understand and know how to teach the fundamental structures and representations of maths and where possible they teach them before they teach mathematical methods. The second is that they know how to listen to children rather than listening for the answers or the maths they are expecting to hear. They really know how to help children unpick their own thinking and express what it is that they're trying to say. And these two sets of skills create a virtuous circle with each other. The better you are at one of them as a teacher, the better you tend to become at the other. So in this and each of the next four videos in this series, I will focus on one structure and one technique for listening to children rather than listening for your answer. Then you'll learn the five key structures you need to know and you'll learn a variety of methods for really tuning into children that you can choose from. So today's structure is the part, part, whole model of addition and subtraction. And this really needs to be taught before children encounter subtraction. And there's a lot of subtraction in the year one curriculum. Curriculum extract you can find in the Facebook group where there are documents to download. And on page two here, children are expected to add and subtract within 20 and there's an example of a problem. Seven is what subtract nine? That's where they're hoping to get to by the end of year one. So we've really got to get this part, part, whole model securely taught early on in year one. So what is the part, part, whole model? Well, before I try to explain it, I'm just going to try and talk about how teachers tend to intuitively teach subtraction and then set it against that so you can see the contrast. So one way to teach subtraction would be to start by writing a subtraction on the board and maybe telling children that subtraction is about counting backwards. So seven subtract five will be seven, six, five, four, three, two, when five are gone. It's pretty complicated. That notation is really scary for a lot of children who are only five years old. There's a lot going on in their imagination if they forgot nothing to touch and move. So your children who are super confident and are up for anything will get it, of course, because they just do. They'll get anything you throw at them. But a lot of your children will be left pretty mystified. So that's pretty weak teaching. Reasonable teaching would be to say, to maybe clearly explain to children that subtraction is about taking away. So this is about having seven objects and five are taken away and you're trying to puzzle out how many are left. So we could do that with magnets here. You could do it with toys, anything you've got lying around. I'm just using magnets because it's easy to demonstrate on this board. You can show them that this calculation is seven and we're going to take five away. One, two, three, four, five. And the answer is two because we have two left. So that's significantly better than the first way because the children can constantly see the numbers in front of them and touch them and move them. It helps to keep their attention. Their attention is very poor when they're just five years old. And it's given them a clear context of things being taken away as being what subtraction is. But by the time we've studied the part, part, whole model, hopefully you'll look at that and go, actually, I could do a lot better than that. So a part, part, whole model. Well, I was asking teachers in Facebook groups what their part, part, whole models look like. And some of them had plumbing and apparatus. There's tube-like things you can get a template for off Twinkle, downloading for free, and they, they enjoyed that. But in the simple form that I can show you here, it looks something like this. And in year one, you need to start off with it being for addition. It's about putting two groups of objects together. 
So this is your addition four add six, and we could put the notation for that beside it. And we are putting them all into one group. This is the combined group and then we're counting how many we've got now in order to puzzle out the answer to that addition. That's how we start working with a part, part, whole model. It's just anything that's got groups which are going to be put together to make a whole, which could then be split back into groups. That's a part, part, whole model. So step one is all about addition. Now step two is about partitioning a number. That is taking a total and creating additions from it. So we could discuss that number six with the children and say, if we're going to split it into parts, what might the parts be? Talk with your talk partner, talk in groups. What might they be? Can you come up with what the addition that equals six might be? And when they come back to you, you know, one group might have said one and five, another might have said two and four, three and three, um, four and two and so on. And you can notate all of those to keep track on what they've done, their additions to six. And if they've got six and zero, all the better. I found another little part, part, whole toy for partitioning numbers that I've got to show you. I think this is quite cool. This is our partitioning apple tree. At the minute it's got 10 apples on the tree, but there's actually a little thing here. You can take some of those apples out. Obviously you want your teaching assistant to do that. It's not a not, not something for the children to do. So you could set it up with seven or any smaller number than 10. And all the children do is they shake the apple tree and it goes down two sides of the trunk and they create their addition to 10 or to whatever number of apples you've got in that. And then they can shake it again. And I love that because for children who are just five years old, I love things you can hold in one hand that aren't gonna come into lots of bits that might get lost. And I love the fact that every child can do that. They, even if their fine motor skills are quite weak, they can do that and they can get an answer. And there's some numbers on there to help them count. There's numbers up the middle to help them count those and create their own additions. So step two of the part, part, whole model is about creating your own additions. Then step three, if we just go back to the tree and then I'll go back to the model, it's got 10 apples on at the minute. Step three is about puzzling out the missing part. So we had 10 apples on that tree and three apples are there. How many apples will we see here if we turn this around? That's how it looks on the other side. And if we've done those first two steps, that should be quite an accessible problem and a fun problem for all your children. We can do it with the part, part, whole model as well. We could start with say five. And we could say to the children, there's going to be, if we're gonna move four counters into there, how many are gonna go in there? Talk with your talk partner, come back to me. Have you puzzled it out? Let's check, we'll move them and see. So that's step three. And then we can introduce the notation of subtraction as being what we've just done. So that question, if four are going into there, how many are going into there? It's become the subtraction five subtract four. Five subtract four is this puzzle. We've got five in the top, four are going into this part. How many is going into the other part? And anyone can do subtraction. And they all, they all understand it. So the other two ways that subtraction are commonly taught are subtraction being taking away and subtraction being counting on. So let's see what that means. If we pick a proper subtraction problem, this is five subtract three. We can do that as taking away. We can say three apples fell off the tree. They are gone. How many are left? Well, the first apple falls off. Now there are only four. The next one falls off, there are only three. And the next one falls off, three are falling off, and there are two left. And we counted down as they, fall, as they fell off because they were taken away. 
So taking away makes sense. It's one way of finding how many are left for the other part. But we could equally well have said five apples are being shared between two people. The first person, they get three apples. How many did the second, per did the second person get? And they got four, five, it's two, counting on. When you find the missing part, that understanding underpins subtraction as taking away and subtraction as counting on. So everything fits together. So let's now go back to this first question we were looking at. And what I was suggesting was that you can introduce subtraction as take away if you simply take away five of those objects. But there can be an underlying confusion there for a child because it might be that they're actually seeing that there's a difference of two and you're counting down and teaching them to count down and their brain is just confused because they can't necessarily even acknowledge that but they are seeing the five and the two as two parts and they can see that answer and it's, they're not getting it in the way that you're describing. And that brings us back to this idea of listening to children. If you have good structures and good apparatus, there's much more chance that they are going to be able to express their own thinking and you're going to be able to connect it to yours and that really matters. So I promised I'd give you a quick technique every video for getting children to explain their own thinking and connect their, the world of their imagination to the maths that's going on in the classroom. And the technique I'm going to give you today is called reification. It comes from the Dutch School of Maths Education and it is just about making a number sentence or a calculation real for a child. So we were just looking at seven subtract five. Let's complete that number sentence. Seven subtract five equals two. And all you do with reification is give children that number sentence and ask them to make their own story about what it might mean. And it could be something that's real or realistic, or it could be something that's entirely fantasy, but is imaginable and either is fine. And every child should be able to come up with their own story. And it leads to all sorts of insights into their world. Hopefully it's really good fun as they become really creative and confident at coming up with unusual stories. And hopefully you'll begin to get both structures of subtraction emerging. Situations where you start with seven objects and five are taken away and situations which are really about a difference and about parts and wholes. And as they listen to each other, they'll come to deeply understand and be able to share all the ideas of subtraction. And their understanding of subtraction is just going to be set up so well for them to thrive in the future. And that will also teach children that the, the result of the calculation remains the same no matter what the objects are, which is something that some children get. If four chocolate bars add one chocolate bar is five chocolate bars, then four sausages add one sausage is going to be five sausages because the answer stays the same if the numbers are the same. But it's not something that they all have really securely and it's something they need to have at this stage. Reification doesn't just work with simple calculations. I've used it all the way up to teaching university level maths where we've had really complex statistical distributions, some of these books down here, and we've put them on the board and told the students to come up with a story, an imaginable story. And we've had Cinderella walking through the forest with magic dust to explain statistical distributions and all sorts. It really works, very powerful teaching method. So quick recap. Before you start working on subtraction, you need to set up part, part, whole models. You need to get children going with addition within those models, with partitioning, which is setting up additions to a total by using your part, part, whole models. Then they work on puzzling out a missing part if you give them the total and one part. Then you overlay the notation of subtraction and then you can link that both to subtraction being taken away or counting down and to subtraction being counting on and see how it all fits together with word problems.
and the classic one you say something like I have nine chairs in the hall I take away eight of them how many are left and if you've got a class that has been taught procedurally that subtraction is take away they're all gonna put up nine fingers and start counting down eight and your children who've got that structural understanding are going to be able to see that it's one because they see the nine, they see the eight, and they see the one. And then we also covered reification, which is a strategy for getting children to connect their own imaginations to the world, classroom world of maths by creating their own stories to explain number sentences. And I just recommend you go and experiment with that. So if you've enjoyed this video, please subscribe to the channel so you can find it again. Please comment on it. Please give us a like and share. Please consider donating. I've had a nightmare this week. My, I spilled some water on my laptop. It has died and I don't know how I'm going to get it back, but it's really encouraging that I've had £50 donated because at least it's a start because the bill's going to be about 350 quid. And hopefully I'll get this video live by three o'clock on Thursday if I can borrow somebody's computer to edit it on. So if you know anyone who wants to sponsor some videos, I can give them credit at the end of the video, but not editorial rights. Please, please, please like the videos. I also posted a video last week where I was talking to some politicians about maths education and that got dislikes from a certain group. I'll put a link to it here and if you could give it a bit of love and give it a like as well I'd be hugely grateful. I can't imagine teachers are going to dislike it. Thanks for watching, really hope you have a great day and go and enjoy your math teaching.